Hi, this is Michael, and in this episode, we are talking to Rick Gregory from Site Therapy. He has been an active member in our group for quite some time, and I'm very excited to have him with us because he's not only been an active member, but he's given us a lot of great technical insight. Um, he seems to know his stuff, and so I'm glad to have him with us today. Rick, could you please tell us a little bit more about yourself? Hey, Michael. Glad to be here. Yeah, I've been doing WordPress and website development for a dozen years, a little over a dozen, actually. Uh, most of it has been standard project, single site stuff. Um, and really, aside from developing the sites, my niche is helping people make their sites work to generate business. So I do a lot of lead gen type sites, some e-commerce sites, uh, generally don't do many brochure sites. And uh, one of the reasons I hopped in your group is because I think there's an opportunity for people who don't have five, ten thousand dollars for you know really heavy, heavily customized uh, solutions to still get a quality product. So you know, I've got a couple of ideas, a couple I had to toss out uh, for developing a is it was or was whatever That's we're what calling want, yeah <laughs> whatever we're calling it. Uh, but I think I've got a couple ideas that I want to explore and I, I think there's definitely, uh, some opportunity there and it, it's time to diversify the business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. So currently your, your main focus of your business is serving clients doing. Yeah. Yeah. So I do, uh, I'm just coming off a large project for, a uh, industrial parts manufacturer doing 14, 15,000 product, uh, commerce site. Uh, and that's been challenging. <laughs> uh, but you know, they, his business really isn't so much selling online as generating leads for customized solutions. So he can invest you know, at, at the level of revenue he's going to make in the next year, investing up front, a good chunk of change in a website made sense. There's a lot of small businesses for whom that's not true. And they're still great businesses, but they either don't have the money up front they're because they're starting out. Uh, they they don't want to invest the money, and they're not they're not sure about ROI. And I think that's where a DIY or a semi DIY uh, approach, you know, helps. And a few of those people will probably turn into full on custom site clients. But that's not why I'm doing. It. I'm doing it because of all the people I talk to who go, ooh, I don't know if I can see my way to spending that much money. And you talk to them about ROI, and you know, they're right. I mean, they're starting out. They don't have a lot of traffic. They don't have a lot of online presence. So do you want to spend $5,000 on a custom website when you might get 10 people a day? Probably not. Do you want to spend 49 bucks a month plus maybe a $500 setup fee? Yeah. You know, that's a lot easier to swallow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, have you picked a specific niche yet for your WAS? WAS? Oh, I've, I've picked several. Several? Okay. Tell us about Several. That. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, it, it's been, the group's been good for helping me think through some stuff. Um, a couple of the ones I picked were, I'll, I'll tell you one that I picked, and I, cause I'm not going to do it anymore. So anybody out there, you're welcome to it. And that is, uh, there's a lot of businesses who make buy-in-bulk beauty product ingredients, formulate their own stuff, and basically are doing very small, targeted, bespoke beauty product cosmetic lines. Some of them are very targeted. You know, there's, there's people out there doing all vegan cosmetics, for example, right? The challenge is they all need to sell online. And as I looked at it, I don't want to do e-commerce because I don't want to be responsible for, you know, for their, their sales. I mean, because it's just me. My, my agency, so to speak, is me. That's one that, you know, I, I've thought about there, there's, a, and it's really not e-commerce isn't really my, it's not my bag. I prefer to do lead gen. Uh, so I've got a couple of lead gen uh, focused ideas similar to the whole custom cosmetics thing, but that don't require actually online sales. Um, and the reason I, the reason that I want to avoid online sales, at least at this level is the hosting issue. I mean, I, I, if you're going to do e-commerce sales, especially if you grow it to dozens of businesses, man, that hosting just has to be, it can't be 99.9%. It's got to be 99.99999%. And there's customer support, there's availability. 
Um, and I think the hosting environment is changing fast enough that in a year or two, there might be several players out there that I trust to do that. Right now, I think there's maybe one or two. I don't really want to move a whole network of sites around from host to host trying to find the best one. Yeah, that's kind of an issue. I know a lot of us are having, including myself, um, trying to find that right host. Who are you using now? Right now, either I have people host themselves. Uh, A lot of my clients host themselves on SiteGround, on WP Engine. But remember, these are single sites. So my current clients. I host a few people, mainly people who started out as friends who are also clients on uh, custom Linode VPSs. Um, I've looked at, I've looked at um, Cloudways. Cloudways is an odd <laughs> financial business model. Um, they're 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 pretty cool. They're a pretty cool business, but wasn't wasn't for me. And then, mm. Bost or Closed. I'm not sure how to pronounce yeah, yeah, that. I don't know either. <laughs> uh, they intrigue me simply because their back end is essentially Google's cloud. So uh, I'm not really worried about it going down. Although the Facebook outage yesterday shows that anything can happen. <laughs> um, I'd like to see more competitors in the closed market. I'm working with a very optimized stack, but this also on something, not somebody's servers in a data center, but on a Google cloud or an Amazon cloud that just lets me scale. Um, But yeah, hosting is hosting e-commerce is a whole different game just because of the money involved. Yeah. Yeah. On the class um, side of it, are you not concerned with the pricing structure? I know that you've been involved in some of those conversations. I'd love to, I'd love to have more data on it, but I'm not super concerned unless it gets way out of whack. Um, And the reason is that unless you have somebody who spikes their traffic, it seems like the, the pricing for hosting is going to scale pretty much linearly with how many clients you have and what their traffic is. And as long as I do pricing right, I'm not that concerned about um, having you know, the hosting cost be 2% or 3% of the, of the overall business. Um, if it becomes a lot, then yeah, that would be an issue. Um, Between twenty percent of my revenue, for example. Yeah, you mentioned getting pricing right. Uh, Do you have a pricing structure that you kind of have in mind? Because I'm actually, I should ask you: at what level or what stage are you in so far in building out a WAS? Um, I'm I'm still doing a little market research. Uh, I'm not really too worried. I mean, having been in the group for a while now. In fact, this came up I think earlier this week or last week. How long would it take you to stand up a WAS? And everybody's like a day. And and I think that's pretty, pretty standard. It's going to take a day or two, even if it takes a week to really get it all there. That's not a lot of time. The the technical side actually doesn't phase me. Um, I'm trying to do the the market research, make sure that the niche is worth it. I'm also trying to guard against analysis paralysis. It's like, (laughs) let's look at the niche a little more. because let's face it, if I stand up a WAS and I don't get clients, I really haven't lost much. I've lost a little time and a few bucks in hosting fees. Big deal. Also, just coming off, I think I mentioned this earlier, I'm just coming off a large e-commerce product right. or project, rather. And now that that's off, I can actually like dive in and build the network out and, and do some Facebook ad testing and stuff. Uh, so that's where I'm at. I oh, warn you. <laughs> awesome. And then, so it's going back to the pricing. So pricing, I thought about pricing a bunch and uh, I think pricing, I'm going to start off fairly straightforward, something in the $49 a month region. I, I want to have it be enough that there's, there is some protection against G the hosting pricing is a little more than I thought. And if you come in at, you know, nine ninety nine or nineteen ninety nine. You don't have a lot of a lot of cushion, and also, frankly, I want to attract people who, while they might not be able to invest five or ten thousand dollars in a site, if they can't invest fifty dollars a month in a site, I'm not sure that they're a client I want. Uh, okay. If there's anything wrong with that, I just I, I just don't want That's that well. level of yeah. quote. Uh, I, and I also think you have to scale that up to so many customers before it becomes interesting revenue that. It's a challenge. So something in the $49 a month range, um, 
an optional setup fee in the $500 range. And I'll do 30 day money back trials. You know, if you don't like it after 30 days, actually I'll, I'll do a cancel at any time. I don't believe in locking people in. I hate it when I'm locked into something at a certain point, I'll probably give them, Hey, pay annually, you know, pay for 11, 12 months and get 11 or pay for 11 months and get 12 free. Yeah. So, you, so if it's a $49 a month, uh, you know, thing they pay four hundred and ninety dollars and they get a, you know the last two months free, free or something yeah, yeah. like that. But uh, I'm not gonna do free trials. Free trials, the conversion rate's so low, you just have all these accounts hanging around that never turn into anything. I don't think pricing is is too big of a concern. And I also think it's better to test something out that seems reasonable mm. and adjust as long as you're not way off base. Yeah, that's really the name of the game. You gotta test. You got you know, our concepts are only concepts until we test them to see how good they are. Or, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your tech stack. What are you planning to use? I'm sure since you've been in this analysis paralysis, you've gone through some of that research as well. Yeah, you know, um, tech stack, really, you know, straightforward stuff. Probably I will start off with close for, for hosting. Mm -hmm. uh, Ultimo some of your plugins to, to customize the admin, because as I think that there was a discussion this morning uh, about people or last night about people sort of freezing when they log in and they, they see everything that WordPress is. Mm. It's easy for non techies to go, Oh God, what do I do now? Uh, so I'm going to pay a bunch of attention to customizing the admin, especially the onboarding stuff. Uh, I think once you get people up and adding their own content and popping in an image here and there, that's fine. You know, they'll, they'll be fine. Uh, but I don't want them to freeze and just go like, I can't deal with this. I'm going to go away. Right. Um, other than that, I'm going to fairly straightforward. I've, as you know, I've gone back and forth on, uh, on page builders. I don't really like page builders. Um, I've used Beaver builder, which is a great tool for prototyping, but the front end editing, feels clunky to me. So I'm experimenting with um, something I think I mentioned a couple of months ago in group. There's a UI library sort of set of tools called UI kit um, that adds, it adds an, an, a lot of nice little animations and things to, for developers to use when they're making websites. They also have, it's a theme that's also a plugin. <laughs> um, it comes with, you know, the, your standard bunch of nice layouts that you can start with. But the cool thing is the editing experience is basically a beefed up version of the WordPress customizer. Hmm. So it's very complete. It feels a little like Elementor, uh, but it's very lightweight and the code is actually optimized really nicely. And for better or for worse, I code by hand. So I look at the code these things generate and... <laughs> I want it to be easy to, to use and, and fast because as we've talked about in other contexts, speed is, speed is everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and that's why I'll start off with close. And if close doesn't provide great speed, they're gone. Um, you know, so that, that's where we're at in terms of plugins, you know, we'll just see, I mean, you know, I'm not, I try to keep plugins to a minimum, but you know, you've got to fit, you, you need features. Uh, one of the niches I'm looking at is going to need online booking. You know, so I'll look around and see what, what that market looks like. And I'm going to have to have a plugin. I'm not going to code that for myself. So we'll have some plugin. So, so you mentioned you do a lot of coding by hand. Um, tell me a little bit about your background in that area and how you got to that point. I'm entirely self-taught because I was interested. My, back, my professional background is actually product management for, in the software industry. So. And that's sort of why I, I do a lot of analysis and requirements and thinking about features up front is, you know, if you're on big projects with a few dozen people, you, you have to do that. Uh, in terms of web coding, it fascinated me about 15 years ago. I'm like, I can sit down with a text editor and if I know enough, I can build really cool professional looking sites. So I taught myself. Um, I, I have no formal CS background. Obviously, I've, I've educated myself online a bunch. Um, and then it's, it, it's been learned by doing. 
And really, that's one of the, the advantages of the web is there's so many examples out there that really all you need is some basic willingness to educate yourself, a text editor, and, you know, I use a Mac, but you don't have to have a Mac, uh, you know, some way to view, view what you're doing. And there you go. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I know that um, when we're in the group, you're definitely making contributions to the group with a lot of information like on, on coding. And so I appreciate that because like for myself, I'm not a coder. So it's, um, it's very interesting to see when people bring in some information that I don't even, I'm not even aware of. Yeah. I mean, and people bring you got, you guys bring in information that I don't know about and stuff. So I think that's the advantage of having a group like that is, is you get different strengths and weaknesses and, and we can hopefully all learn from each other. It's, Thank you for saying that because it's nice to hear that I'm not just typing into the wind. No, absolutely not. I, I know I'm not the only one that enjoys or I can learn from what you have to say. So thank you for doing that. No, you're, welcome. you're welcome. So tell me a little bit about your marketing strategy with your, well, not just your WASP, but just in general, like what have you experienced so far and, and then what, and how you plan to apply that with WASP? So I'll, I'll do that in reverse. The WASP thing is going to be, you know, there's going to be a few people I'll talk to and I'll say, Hey, try this out. Take a look at it. Uh, people I've talked to in, in as I've done market research, uh, which is basically going around and two people I know in the niche I'm thinking about and saying, Hey, what do you think about X? Um, and I'll, I'll comp them probably either a few months free or a year free. Uh, because if I give my first few clients away for free, who cares really? In the, in the large scheme of things, hopefully that's a tiny percentage. Um, I don't like doing cold e call, e calling, cold emailing. Um, I may end up doing some of that. We're going to rely on the good old online ads. I know everybody loves them. Uh, but, you know, I'll do Facebook ads. Uh, and, and as much as conflicted as I am about using Facebook sometimes, uh, the ad, audience targeting is incredibly useful. Uh, so I'll start off with that and with a modest budget and, you know, test out things. Um, on the back end, a lot of times people aren't looking to sign up right away. They're doing research. They're kicking the tires. So there will be active campaign uh, automation on the back end. Uh, if you're familiar with active campaign, they're an email marketing tool. That, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they have very good automation tools. Um, so I'll, I'll, you know, do some email marketing, some remarketing stuff uh, using Google Analytics, maybe some AdWords. Um, I don't know if I know enough about the market to pick the right words, so I, that may come, kick in later. And see what's what. You know, I'll probably spend a few hundred bucks in ads. Hopefully, I'll, I'll break even shortly thereafter. But, you know, I, I just, it's going to be a sunk cost doing some learning up front to see what, what messages attract clients, what messages don't, et cetera. Hopefully we'll also start to get some word of mouth because that's what's happened in my project oriented business is you, you get referrals and you know, people say, Hey, if you, if you need X, go talk to this guy. Hopefully if I can do a good job, attract some good clients the first time and really delight them, like that's an overused thing. Uh, then they'll, you know, there will be a snowball effect, and it'll take some time to kick in. But hopefully, people will say, "Hey, that's a nice new website you have. Who did it?" You know, and I may, I may do some very edge things like, you know, pow a powered byline in the footer or something. But uh, those aren't going to that. That's not going to drive a ton of information. It's either going to be ads or it's going to be word of mouth, and word of mouth is really powerful. Yeah, I totally agree. And especially if you have a, a type of niche where they're all communicating with each other. Um, one, of, yeah. one of the strategies that I've actually started implementing is, hold on one second. I have dogs making noises in the background, so my apologies there. That's why I keep No, 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 no problem. <laughs> uh, so one of the strategies that, um, that you know, we've implemented was starting a Facebook group for our specific niche as well. And so that seems to be working. It's not quite where I thought it would be, mainly because in the niche that I chose, which is the auto care professionals, um, they're, they're not spending a lot of time on the internet from what I could tell. Right. You know, so right. they're not sitting there like, 
with like the, like marketing the WAS plugins is a lot easier because I'm marketing to people that are on Facebook all the time. And so it just makes more sense. Um, so it's, you have to just, like we said earlier, you kind of have to throw things out there and test the market and see what works and what doesn't. Yeah. And I mean, it actually, that, that's actually a good idea. And I might do some Facebook group stuff too. I've also got to focus on things that can be automated or not take a ton of time. Cause like I said earlier, site therapy is just me. I, there's not other people around to do it. So I don't want to start a group and then not be able to really dive in and spend at least an hour or two a day on it <laughs> if it gets rolling. Um, you know, so we'll see. I look at the whole WAS thing sort of like compound interest in investments. You know, you're not going to get rich quick unless you happen to get really lucky. But, you know, if I start it up and I get a client a week, then in a year I've got 50 clients. In two years I've got 100 clients, roughly. No, I didn't get my 100 clients in a week, but two years from now I've got 100 clients. And if I don't have a high churn rate, that's not a bad place to be in. I mean, if I'm charging 49 bucks a person, in a couple of years I'm making grossing 5,000 a month. That's not bad, but you know, it's gonna take some patience. Yeah, it's um, one of those things that it can definitely compound. I know that when I first started, I was thinking, man, this is gonna be easy. I'm just gonna build this out. I'm gonna do some Facebook ads and we're gonna get, you know, I'm gonna hit my thousand number fast, you know, cause that's really, that's the number, that's the, that I'm trying to hit. I want to hit a thousand. Yeah. Obviously no one's there, at least that I know of is there yet. And within the group, um, there might be some other wasses out there that are not participating in the group. But um, anyways, a thousand is my goal. I mean, man, I, my, my price right now is what, $67 a month. And so if I got that 67 grand a month, I'm not doing too bad. No. Yeah, no, you could probably live on that. How did you get, how did you do 67 by the way? That's an interesting number. Well, I, you know, I've, so that's a good question. So what I've done is um, I started off with a three tier pricing and I had 49 was the lowest tier. It was, that was a single page website. And then I went to this middle tier was going to be um, 59. And so wait, 57, sorry, 57 and then 67. So what happened was, is um, I just got rid of the, the single landing pages altogether because it's just kind of adding more confusion to the, to the, you know, my consumers. And so right. I just got rid of it. And then I realized that people that are willing to spend 57 are just as well willing to spend 67. So I just eliminated all the tier pricing and just went straight to 67. Um, that's, that's, that's actually really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then now I'm going to be incorporating the groundhog in the groundhog uh, plugin into our system, which is similar to what you mentioned active campaign. But yeah, I, you know, I need to look at, at Groundhog. I, I've seen it. I haven't because I've been heads down on this commerce project for the last two months. I haven't had a chance to look at it. But that that looks interesting. You know, may end up being what I use instead of Active Campaign. Yeah, because you can white label it. It's all within your network. They're not sending it out to a third party. Um, I do like Active Campaign. I do use that currently for myself and for some client clients that I have. But um, I think Groundhog makes more sense from at least for the WAS specifically, just because you can control it all in one place so it's just a certain there's some technical stuff that i'll have to figure out when it comes to uh, emailing i had a you saw the interview i had done with him i'm sure at least yeah i, don't know I saw it i haven't had a chance to watch it yeah. and in there he talks about how he solves the email issue and stuff so i'm kind of excited to see um, put that in place and see how it works out so that that's that's one of the things i plan on adding to my um, offer so i'll have a 67 and i think we're going to make that one at 97 so we'll just have two pricing Structure. And that makes sense. And, and I think that's the, the other thing that you just have to, everybody has to sort of test and figure out for themselves is, okay, your base is, your base offering is what are there upsells that make sense to your client base and yeah. your upsells might not make sense to mine. And sometimes the upsells will make sense to virtually any business. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So for our pricing, we have the $67 for the groundhog, which we'll be adding shortly. Um, but talking about like third party integrations, what have you considered any other things to add? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things I'm kicking around. Um, I still need to, you know, to really validate them, but things like, uh, external booking sites, uh, there's a couple of, a couple of the ideas I have will need on the site itself. There'll be some way to do make an appointment, but 
everybody, you know, everybody has their own, every industry has their own appointment booking service. Um, like restaurants have open table, high end restaurants have something called resi, which is like open table, but more shishi. Um, so, so there's, th there's things like that, that I'll, I'll definitely have to integrate with. And, you know, this is one of the, one of the things where I've got to look at it and say, wow, is there a plug-in? And if there isn't a plug-in, you know, that may be something I contract out uh, and have written or write myself, one of the two, and, uh, you know, provide that back to the community or even maybe sell that back as a service, sort of like what you're doing, you know, with the admin pro stuff. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. I, I think, yeah. that, if I recall correctly, there was a conversation, I believe you were actually in it, um, regarding the booking inside the West. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the things that started, one of the reasons I jumped in that, and one of the things I've been thinking about is, uh, I mean, I have, a, I have a client who is, I'm also a customer of, and uh, they actually have online booking on their current site, but it's clumsy, you've got to create an account, because the form on the website really is just a, an integration, uh, uh, window into this service that a lot of people in this niche use. I'd rather have something smoother and more integrated and more friendly on the site, but they need to be able to pull up all the bookings from this service because what they do is at their front desk, when you walk in, you say, hi, I'm Rick. I'm here to see Todd at 11 and they've got it on their computer. And, and, and the service helps them do things like send out reminders and all this other stuff. That's not a service I want to get into. I don't want to be sending out reminders for their clients. They've got somebody to do that. But I need to be able to integrate a, a more friendly sign up, you know, to do it. I mean, one of the things I really like to do is, um, I don't know if you've used OpenTable to make restaurant reservations, but when you do, if you see a restaurant, it shows you times available and unavailable. So you're not going like, oh, maybe I'll try this time. Oh, that doesn't work. Maybe I'll try this time. That doesn't work. So I'd love to bring that to this niche too, because right now it doesn't. You've, you've got to sort of try a time and then the, the system says, mm, no. <laughs> and that's not really friendly. <laughs> From my perspective, I don't want to be try a bunch of things and be told, no, no, they're told. Yeah, no, I'd that's not a good business plan. So yeah, so that's I mean that's something that I kind of try to emphasize in everything I do, which is give users a good, smooth, intuitive experience. So there's the less friction you have for for your customers, the more likely they are to actually either become customers or stay customers. And so if I can help my WAS clients remove friction for their customers, hopefully it helps their business. How did you co come about uh, selecting your niche? I know you haven't mentioned it specifically, you're probably keeping it secret, but how did, what made you select it? Or if you, if it's not a secret, let us know. <laughs> I, it, it, it's not a big <laughs> secret, but I'm not going to say. Uh, how did I select it? Um, I, this, this is one of those things that I are kind of, it's kind of a story in software. A lot of software gets created to solve a problem that the person creating it has. I was trying to make an appointment online with this business and it was a pain. And I'm like, hold it. There are thousands of these kinds of businesses in the country. So probably tens of thousands. So a, there's enough people there that I just have to get a relative few, right? I, I'm not looking at a niche with a hundred total clients. Uh, and then the other thing is the problem annoyed me, <laughs> you know, and if the problem annoys me, uh, it probably annoys other of their customers who are trying to make appointments. I'm like, well, hang on. And I sort of looked around at other people um, in this niche. And they all have, some of them have really nice websites. Some of them don't. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, it just varies. And so if I can get the ones who don't have great websites, nicer looking websites that work well, and that make it easier for their clients to book appointments and stuff. To me, that's hopefully a win for them. And that's a win for me. Um, so really, it, it all came out of a moment of 
God, this is just klutzy as heck. And then I st started saying, hold it. I build websites. And there's this whole WAS thing. Hmm. So that was about two or three weeks ago, actually. This is a new idea. Um, as I, it, cause I was going down the whole e-commerce cosmetics thing, as we talked about earlier, and I just, you know, I just decided to bail from that. I didn't like the business risk. I didn't like the legal exposure, um, you know, of running, of hosting e-commerce. And honestly, if you're going to host small e-commerce businesses, you probably are better off going to Shopify anyway. Um, That's true. So I was kicking the, the idea around and then this happened and it sort of spurred a, a line of thought of, Hey, I could do this. I could do it for 49 bucks a month. Uh, because no one client in this vertical is going to generate tens of thousands of visits. They're, it's not the sort of business that's going to get, get on the today show and spike your hosting bill way up. So to go back to the cl cluster close thing earlier, uh, I'm not going to have a single client spike my hosting costs without also with no revenue to offset that. Uh, they're all going to be in the hundred to couple thousand visits a month, you know, maybe a few thousand visits a month. And, you know, if one goes a little over, fine, it's a portfolio thing, you know, it'll all, it'll all even out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Have you tried pitching this to your target audience to see what their response might be? Not yet. Um, right. I, I've been, I've, I've been, this big e-commerce thing I've been on has been sort of a roadblock of getting this last thing up and running. And it's been a good project. The client's great. Um, I've learned a bunch because uh, I've had to do way more with WooCommerce than any single person should have to do. Um, but it launches tomorrow. Oh, okay. maybe, maybe today. We'll knock on the fake wood desk here. Um, and that frees me up to go do this. And I, and I know... I know I can go talk to a handful of people within a week and sort of validate if this is crazy or if it's something that they're interested in. And once I get past that handful, uh, if they don't tell me, no, go away, you're absolutely crazy, I'll launch it. And because like we've talked about multiple times, you know, the only way to, to really know is to try it out. Yeah, absolutely. Do you do your own design work or do you farm that out? Um, I've done both for, for client projects. I've done both. I've worked with in-house designers. I've worked with outside designers that I pick or that the client picks, et cetera. For this, uh, I'm going to go back to the, what's called U themes, the, the theme framework I mentioned that, um, this kind of a page builder, um, they have a bunch of canned designs, which are a nice place to start. And I'll probably honestly start there. Um, I'll probably start with half a dozen templates, uh, you know, give or take and, uh, go from there because the other thing I've learned in the whole world of software product management is no matter how much you research and talk to people up front, your clients, especially your early clients will guide you by asking for things. So you'll get in there, and if I if I come up with a half dozen templates, I guarantee you somebody will say, "Hey, can I have a template that looks kind of like X?" Okay, fine. You know, I mean, they'll and then they'll ask for features around booking that I haven't thought of, and they'll ask for other things. And again, I'm going to try and launch with a good, credible set of features. I don't want to launch just bare bones, like, "Hey, sign up, and you might get a nice site." But I'm going to let my clients actually guide me by, you know, maybe I'll, I'll probably create a private group just for clients uh, on Facebook and I'll talk to them. I'll call them after, I'm, you know, the first 10 or 20 or 30 clients, I'll probably call, you know, once a month and say, Hey, how you doing? Is there anything else you need? Uh, and they'll tell you. And that's that way I don't spend a lot of time, developing features that they don't really want. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause we have ideas that may not be what their, their ideas. Yeah. I mean, I'm not there. I don't run their business and no matter how much research I do, it's, there's no substitute for running a business, you know, 25 or seven days a week. Right. You know? 
I think that's a great idea. In fact, that's not kind of something that I did in the beginning too. But the way I did it was um, we actually built out the sites for the first few clients so that in that process of building it out and we didn't charge them for it. And in that process, we're able to, well, can I get this? Can I add that? And so once we saw sure. the commonalities, then we made sure that we included it as a standard feature. Um, yeah, and then that, we, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and then we released it to the wild and to allow them to start building out their own sites and do a DIY situation. And then I realized from that that I've said this in other uh, episodes that I may not have posted yet, but um, basically my experience with like the whole DIY process is that clients just really don't want to have that learning curve. I don't know what it is about just getting online. Even I think it's the same probably or similar probably for Wix or any other platform where you just people are more focused about, you know, working their business than they are about building out a website. And so <clears throat> what we've done and we had the ones that we let do the DIY, you know, we had a good amount of those people who actually sign off or, or, or cancel their services. Um, I don't have any contracts, just like you mentioned, you're not going to have any. And because again, like you, I don't, I don't like to be put into contracts. So why would I make force someone else to be in a contract? Uh, but with that said, though, we do offer, like you mentioned, you're going to do too, is we offer that, you know, you pay for 10 months, you get two months free. So if you want to pay 670 for the year, you get your hosting and everything. And we will do it. We actually throw in the setup process for them with that price. So that way we know nice. that they're already in there. Um, nice. So there's kind of like two reasons why we want to, to do the setup for them. One is to keep them on, the number one reason is to keep them on board as a customer, you know, obviously as long as we can without churn. And then the second reason we um, do the setup process for them is because we are using Elementor and we want to make sure that we fit within their guidelines that we're like, technically we're not a WAS in the sense of do it yourself. You know, we are just, we just built out a system that allows our efficiency levels to be increased by building out essentially custom sites for each individual customer. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The whole licensing plugin licensing, these are morass. I just, don't really want to get into, which is one of the reasons I chose the U themes, uh, the U themes plug theme, because uh, it has no such. It's like, here, go use it, and it works on multi-site. They have no licensing restrictions. I'm like, yes, getting people to sort of buy in and use it those first few times is super key. Every client I've I've done a lot of bespoke custom sites and clients will often call me and say, Hey, I know you showed me how to do this when the site launched. You know, this is like two, three months later. How do I do X again? Because they've been running their business in the intervening two or three months. Their business is not online. I mean, I, most of my clients, their core business actually doesn't take them online naturally. They it's other stuff. I've, Guys who sell wine, people who sell, you know, uh, who sell interior, uh, uh, you know, like tile and and uh, wood flooring and other services. I, I this industrial parts manufacturer guy who I'm, whose project I keep talking about. None of them are naturally online. Their business is doing something else. Uh, so yeah, I I think there's there's a real danger in losing them. I think you're absolutely right. But if you hook them, they'll probably stick around. There's going to be some churn, but they'll probably stick around. Um, Is there other, um, like other services that you plan to offer on the back end? Yeah. I, I have a colleague who is incredibly good at SEO and at copy and content. Um, I'll probably hook him in for, uh, for an upsell there. To say, hey, if you have keywords that you want to rank for, uh, because local SEO, especially, and this is a, the the niche I'm looking at is the services provided are very local to the business. So, you know, a client in Albuquerque is not competing with you know somebody in LA. Uh, local SEO is just you know not a black art, but it takes a lot of specialized knowledge. Uh, but it can pay off really big time, especially if the client either does, hasn't paid attention to it at all or has kind of done it wrong. Um, so I'll have SEO packages like that. I'll have probably, he's got copywriters on staff. And as we've talked about in the group, content is, especially initial content, is kind of one of those stumbling blocks. It's like, okay, 
client. Now you've got to put in copy. And they're like, oh, God, I don't have time to write copy. And you can put in default content for them, but that comes with its own SEO issues, the whole duplicate content issue that Google sees. Um, you know, so I, I'll probably, maybe even as part of setup, you know, upsell them con copywriting hours. You know, there, there, there's that sort of thing, Groundhog or Active Campaign or some, some sort of email marketing, um, which I've done for other clients successfully, is uh, people sort of get enamored of Instagram ads, you know, let's, let's market in WhatsApp or Snapchat. The ROI on well done email marketing is still just so incredibly high uh, that Honestly, you're kind of crazy to ignore it, um, especially if you're a local business because you know you can, you can reach out. You don't need thousands of people. You need a couple, a few hundred loyal customers, and you can make the ROI and email marketing just go through the roof. Uh, yeah, so that's the automation else. side of it, right? Like where they're constantly, Absol being, yeah, Absol absolutely. You know, so I'll offer that as as an upsell, and then again, going circling back to letting your customers tell you what they want versus trying to guess once once i get past those two which are sort of low-hanging obvious fruit i'll let people tell me if there are there other things they they want or are they satisfied because you know if i can hook them in and keep them satisfied and they just keep sending me 49 dollars a month or 490 dollars a year i'm happy yeah for they're sure. happy i'm happy and we're all happy um uh, so we'll see yeah going back to your content issue um by providing them with like default content. That's something that we actually are doing as well. And uh, we, I don't know if you know this, but one of our plugins, Content Editor Pro, we built into the Spintex um, technology. And so- Yeah. Go ahead. Getting back to your comment about tech stack, your stuff is, at, is actually probably going to be part of the tech stack, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. Both both that and the, the admin editor and stuff. Because, man- Every time I fire up the WordPress UI, clients just mm -hmm. their eyes glaze over, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I actually had had forgotten that you do that. So thank you for reminding me. The content editing, the content stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm I'm excited about it. I like how it works. I, I also like how that you can switch between templates and the con content doesn't get lost. Um, so that's nice as well. Yeah, that's a big deal with um, that's a big deal with page builders too. Is you know, you want to make sure that the content doesn't just come become a morass of short codes if something yeah. you change something. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it is a, it's it's concerning, but I think it's an also an upsell for your customers if you had something like that. So that way, you know, come year two and they're paying their four seventy or what if they're paying annually or whatever, that you can justify that expense and say, look, all you have to do is switch your template and you're done. It's a done deal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, I want people to be able to keep their site evergreen, so they will switch templates, and, they, and I'm sure they will come to me and say, "Hey, I've got a new logo," and all this stuff. Um, and that's the big unknown: is how much support I'll have, you know, in terms of hours per week. But we'll see. I'll probably also add them. I use Manage WP to sort of provide care plans to some of my clients, and I'll probably put these people. Um, on it and upsell, we're not upsell, let them know that that's a benefit of the base package. That they're getting their stuff's being backed up nightly, that there's security going on, et cetera. Uh, you know, because again, that's just insurance. It's peace of mind for, for business clients. Uh, they're like, Absolutely. oh, you're going to do that. And I don't have to worry about my site being hacked. Or if it is hacked, I can just back up. You know, we can just revert to yesterday's copy great what's your take on being transparent with having your system on wordpress or not have you thought about that yeah i have and like you i'm gonna sort of hide that mm -hmm. uh for two reasons i'm actually not embarrassed by wordpress i've had this discussion with developers who use other cmss and as you probably know some of them can be very like oh you use wordpress well i use a real content management system <laughs> and i'm like do my clients like what they're using? Yes. Uh, I don't think for most clients saying, I use WordPress, is an advantage. 
I don't think it's, they're, they're going to go like, wow, you use WordPress. Either they're not going to know it or they're just going to have heard about it in news. The other thing is there's still a lot of what I view as misinformation about, oh, WordPress is slow. WordPress is insecure. It gets hacked all the time. Yeah, and it there are exploits for WordPress, especially if you don't keep it updated. But when you have as many sites built on a piece of software as, as WordPress does, guess what? It's just a law of large numbers. If you have 10 million sites out there and they're all built on this and 0.01% of them are hacked, you're talking about 100,000. Don't hold me. Don't quote me on that math. <laughs> but, you know, you're talking about, and then the news picks up 50,000 or whatever sites hacked based on WordPress. And I don't want people to go down that road. I don't want to have that discussion with them because uh, I don't think it's relevant to their business. I mean, do, do people know about, say, Shopify stack or Wix's stack or, any, you know, anything like that? No, they don't. And they shouldn't have to care. Um, if I do my job right, they shouldn't have to care. Uh, they should just know, hey, I've got a site. It's always up. It's fast. It's easy to like manage content in and it works and it generates business for me. Yay. Mm -hmm. And that's really all I want them to have to worry about. And then the other side of the token too, is that if anyone that does understand WordPress or knows a little bit about it, I should say, they, they might come to you and say, we want plugins, something specific. And Absolutely. Issues. Yeah. And what I try and do with people like that, and again, I've learned this through a career of software product management is tell me about your problem. Cause they'll come and say, I want feature X or I've heard this is a cool plugin. I want to add this plugin. Well, why, what are you, what problem are you trying to solve? Because I can often help people solve that. And sometimes they'll pick the right, they'll, they'll be right on, uh, on beam with that feature. And that feature is the best way. Sometimes not, you know, sometimes they, I can say, you know what, there's this other plugin that solves your problem better. And I won't even, I won't often say there's this other plugin. I'm like, we can add that feature and I know of a better way to do it. <clears throat> Let me add it for you, uh, you know, in a, in a staging site. And uh, you can take a look at it and see if it solves your problem. And it also gets it, it gets me an understanding of the problems they're trying to solve. So to circle back to the thing we've mentioned a few times, oh, gee, I'm getting a request to solve this kind of problem for multiple clients. I should add that to my offering. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. So there's, I don't know, there, there's a lot to consider when building out your WAS for sure. Um, so yeah, you know, I mean, it's, you don't want to go too simple, but you don't want to try and overthink it, you know, yeah. uh, but you got to get something out there or you're just one, another guy sitting in a Facebook group sort of talking about what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that we mentioned this because I was actually watching a motivation video uh, this morning with um, my, my stat, I think is how you say it, his name. The, there's a guy, YouTuber guy and basically someone else made a compilation of uh, motivation things that he, motivational oh. things he said. Um, and basically he was saying that it, it's like, and he showed like a chart and he had like 10 different things on this chart, like little bars and says, you could do 10 things just okay. Or you can do one thing, 10 times, like, like focus on that one thing and do it like yeah. this. Like you yeah. don't want to start something and not finish it and just do it. Okay. You want to actually focus. And so it was kind of yeah. an interesting point or a reminder, I should say. Yeah. And that's where, that's, that's a good reminder. I should, uh, you should post that in the group. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. But yeah, you know, it's, it's the whole, you got to do one thing really well, but you actually got to do it. You know, we can plan it and play with, staging sites and all this stuff and go like, Oh, wouldn't it be cool if I added this? But at some point, you know, you've got to try and go get customers. Um, mm -hmm. And where that is, is varies for each of us, you know? Yeah. And like you mentioned, and we talked about is that, and they, there's, there's a word for MVP, your minimal viable product. You want to get out yeah. there as quickly as possible so that your customers can give you the feedback that you need to build it the yeah. way it really should be built. Because like you're saying, you know, you can perfect, try to sit there, and do all the analytics and whatnot and perfect and have the quote unquote perfected, you know, system. And then come to find out that's not even anything that they ever wanted or it's just overboard. And to the point in the group 
from a few days ago, it doesn't take very long to stand up a last. I mean, if you if you're going to invest in a handful of plugins, uh, you know, Ultimo, your stuff, uh, you can stand a last up in a you know a, from a day to a week, depending on your familiarity with stuff and and right. what decisions you make. You know, so that's not even really the problem. It's just making sure you understand your target market well enough that you're not way off and, and people are just like, no, get out of my office. Mm. Uh, metaphorically speaking, because I don't usually go knock on people's doors. <laughs> yeah, I, I think to be fair on the building, that how long it takes to build out OS um, from a day to a week is on the tech side, that's probably true. But I think the time, most time consuming part, at least in my experience, has been the marketing side. Like how are you Absolutely. presenting your offer uh, what's your pricing model and then all the templates and then the content that goes with it and the imagery and all that stuff. So that, yeah. that you can't get done in a day. At least I, I can't get that done in a day. So. No, I can't, no, I can't get that done in a day, no matter how much coffee I drink. But you know, <laughs> again, you know, I'm trying to do, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm going to do a half a dozen templates. I might launch with three templates because you can always add templates. The content, I think you're absolutely right is, it's a challenge because the content's got to both be good in terms of well-written, et cetera. It's also got to be credible because when you go out to your clients, again, they know their business. And if you've just written sort of poor content, you know, you've hurt your marketing. Yeah. No, the market, the marketing thing is a, a real deal. I, my goal, I'm going to expect you guys to hold this to me in the group. In fact, I should put this in the group just so it's a stake in the ground is to have something launched in about a month. So in about, yay, tax time, <laughs> uh, to have something launched. Awesome. Because I think a month is not bad. I need, I need to talk to a few people. I need to come up with some content. Uh, I need to pick my themes and stuff. But I'd rather stand it up in a month and expand than stand it up three months later or four months later. It's the summer maybe my clients are off going on vacation, oh, you yeah. know, you get all that to deal with. So your plans don't always co coincide with their plans for sure. <laughs> I, I tried to launch a product during the holidays once that didn't work so well. <laughs> uh, you know, so, so again, I think a month is reasonable. Um, you know, we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted. Awesome. Well, that, I think, you know, rounding up our hour, I think that's a good way to conclude this conversation. Is there yeah. any last thoughts that you might have or are we, are we good? I think we're good. Thanks for awesome. taking the time. You yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate your time. This has been a great conversation. I enjoyed it very much and I look yeah. forward to staying connected in the group and keeping you encouraged to, to build out your WAS within that month. I'm going to hold you to it and check in. Oh, God. That's right. <laughs> It. okay well i guess i gotta do it now yeah well it doesn't have to be perfect just gotta get it done is all so <laughs> awesome okay well, thank you Take care, for your time. yeah have a great rest of your day take care you too. thanks bye, -bye.